Presenting a submission to the Under Armour Armour 39 Challenge, put forth by the Vision and Motion Analysis Lab at the University of Calgary, titled Audio Feedback for Enhancing Motor Skills and Performance. Submitted by Dr. Jeffrey Boyd, Andrew Godbout, and Chris Thornton. Motion and sound go together. We see it in marching. We see it in dance. Sonification is the nonverbal representation of data in sound. When data comes from a sensor that measures human motion, sonification turns human motion into sound. Effective sonifications can help athletes in real time. We start with an example or model of how an athlete should move and measure it. This example shows joint angles of a person walking measured with a motion capture system. When we sonify an athlete's motion, we measure their motion the same way we measured for the model, then synchronize the person with that model. You can think of it as having the computer system march in step with the athlete. Once our computer system is synchronized, it can add artificial footfalls to match the walker. The Armour 39 measures an athlete's motion in real time. If we sonify the Armour 39 data the right way, we can enhance the Armour 39's ability to help athletes. We'll show you some ways to sonify data from the Under Armour Armour 39. Let's try speed skating with the Armour 39. Andrew is our model skater. We'll record the accelerometer measurements while he skates. We create an Android app that runs on a Nexus 7 tablet. It communicates with the Armour 39 through Bluetooth. Once we have the data, we can process it as we like, either recording it, synchronizing it against previous recordings, and even converting it into sound. For a full lap around a 400 meter speed skating track, the accelerometer data looks like this. You can clearly see different patterns for the corners and the straightaways. We extract the pattern for corner strides and for the straightaways. We create a rhythmic feedback by synchronizing incoming data from the Armour 39 against our previously recorded model. Because we have identified corners and straightaways, we can create two different types of rhythmic feedback, one when the athlete is in the corner and the other for the straightaways. When I come out of the corner, I have it set to uh, in the corner a one, two, one, two. In the straightaways is a one, two, three, one. Hey, I'm Jordan Belchos from the Canadian Speed Skating Team, and I'm going to try out the uh, Under Armour 39. Uh, 
Uh, so Jordan, you just skated with the rhythmic uh, sound feedback. That was actually matching to my stride. So uh, could you tell that it was uh, synchronizing to your stride? Yeah. yeah. Once, I, once I kind of figured it out and got the got the feeling for it, then I could definitely. It just is like. So do you think something like that could be useful for high performance athletes, for learning athletes, for for anybody? Yeah, for sure. I think I even had trouble sometimes with matching my correct rhythm for sure in the corner mm -hmm. or being patient in the straightaway like yeah. when, uh, when I'm getting tired or something. When I'm racing poorly I, uh, I I don't take as much, I'm not as patient, I don't take as much time on my skate so that would be like a really good thing to uh, to use. Okay awesome, let's do uh, one last one. It's a, uh, a speed, uh, a s estimate of your speed in the corners. So okay. faster in the corners. So I just skated with the uh, with the ticker tape. Uh, you can really feel like or hear the difference when when I'm accelerating and when I'm decelerating in the frequency of the of the beeps. Good for uh, training, so you can like so I can tell where I'm losing my speed and where I'm gaining speed and to try to minimize obviously the the losses. Uh, that worked pretty well. So. What happened was the ticker started out, tick, 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 tick. I get into the corner and it starts increasing, tick, 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 tick. Which is like a feedback loop to me because I wanted to keep increasing. And so uh, I definitely end up going beyond my current ability level in terms of fitness there. Uh, now the neat thing is we use our stride matching there to know when we're in the corner. And only the corners affect the ticking. So when I come out of the corner, whatever pace I exited at, tick, 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 tick. That stays the same for the whole straightaway. And then as soon as I enter the next corner, if I slow down my stride, which started happening because I got tired, it goes tick, 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 tick. So then it's like uh, feedback, like telling me, hey, get going fast again, get that nice noise you want to hear. We do this for a runner too. Armor 39 accelerometer data for a runner looks like this. The vertical axis is basically a sinusoid so it is easy to synchronize. We wondered if we could teach a runner to run without heel striking. For that, the runner needs to take shorter strides. So we sonified where, in time, the footfalls should be for a short stride with fast cadence. We've created an Android app as shown. We synchronize Armor 39 acceleration data against our running models to produce a phase ramp and a strong correlation. To account for longer or shorter strides, we use a set of models and match the best fit. Longer strides, the tone is sonified immediately before footfall. Shorter strides, exactly at footfall. In effect, the tone immediately before footfall on longer strides encourages those runners to set their foot down earlier, thus matching to the shorter stride length. So far, we've only tried periodic motions like walking, running, and skating. We think we can help with transient motions too. Imagine if we could synchronize your basketball layup with your favorite NBA star, golf swing to a PGA champion, or help you kick the ball like David Beckham. Andrew is a PhD candidate in computer science at the University of Calgary. He's a former member of the Canadian national speed skating team, and he currently stays involved in the coaching side of the sport. Chris did his bachelor's at the University of Calgary, his master's at the University of British Columbia, and he currently works at Google. Chris enjoys cycling in the Bay Area. Jeff is an associate professor of computer science at the University of Calgary. He does a variety of things for fitness, including skating around the Inlet Global most lunch breaks and paddling his kayak in white water whenever he can.
Good work on it. Great, good work. Thanks.